Hi everyone, and uh, welcome back uh, to this uh, series of uh, PAO exams. And this is a question from Electrical A6 Power Systems and Machine. Uh, this is about synchronous machines, and uh, this question is was in December 2017. So, uh, in this question, we have a 480 volt, uh, which is uh, the rated voltage of this machine, 6 volts, 60 hertz, delta connected. So, the connections here that you have in the machine is a delta uh, delta connection and in the delta connection that the v line is equal to the v phase and the i line is equal to root 3 i i phase okay cylindrical rotor synchronous machine it's not a salient rotor it's a cylindrical rotor has a synchronous reactance of 0.95 ohm per phase and negligible armature resistance so ra Ra here in the model is basically equal to zero. Your Xs here is equal to 0.9095. The full load armature current is 55 amp at 0.8 power factor lagging. So that is the your I uh, line, 55 amps. This is the rated value, at rated condition. This is the current. Now, the generator has combined friction and windage losses, 1.5 kilowatt, and core loss, uh, 1.25 kilowatt at full load conditions. Now, we have adjusted, or in this question, the field current has been adjusted so that the no load terminal voltage is 480 volt. Okay. Now, what does this mean? The field current will control EA, the internally generated voltage your ea actually is proportional to the flux which is basically coming from the field so it's proportional to if so you adjust if once you adjust if and you don't change if ea will be actually constant now when i line or the the armature can equal to zero the terminal voltage and the internal voltage will be exactly the same if we draw the single phase model for this here it is this is your ea and this is your vt okay for the single phase and this is your gxs and ra is ignored so ea is set to 480 volt now when i equal to zero your vt is also equal to 480 volt so this is what is meant by this. Then we need to find certain certain things. Now, this is a very, very interesting question because here we are given EA and we want to find in part two the terminal voltage. Okay, and I will come to this why this is interesting. Let's start with the first part, which is the speed. Okay, so in S, the synchronous speed, as you know, the synchronous machine rotate at a constant speed we call it the synchronous speed which is equal to 120 times the frequency divided by p is equal to 120 times the frequency which is 60 hertz divided by the number of poles which is six six pole so this will give me 1200 rpm very straightforward now let's go to part number two which i said is very interesting you need to find the terminal voltage when it is delivering the rated current, the rated current was already given to me as 55 amp, and the power factor is 0.8 leading. Now, why this is interesting? Here, the terminal voltage, Vt, now let me just draw this to visualize this. This is your Ea. This is your Gxs, which we know it. It's already given to me. This is G as 0.95 okay and uh, basically uh, this is your vt now your vt we use it always as a reference so it has an angle of zero okay so vt magnitude i don't know this is what i want to find the terminal voltage you want to find the terminal voltage and ea i know the magnitude now, because it's delta, so the phase and the line are exactly the same. And here it says that the no load terminal voltage 480. So this becomes, this is 480. But the angle is unknown. So here the angle is unknown. 
here the magnitude is unknown. This is why I make it is an interesting. And this is your I A equal to 55. So applying KVL here will lead to solving nonlinear equations. So we don't want to do, to do that. How we can solve this problem? We solve it graphically. So how to do that? Let's start with VT. Now, always my VT has an angle of zero. So this is my VT. Okay, and magnitude that I don't know, but an angle equal to zero. Now my IA, the rated current, has a leading power factor. Now the theta is equal to cosine inverse of 0.8, which is 36.9. So your current IA will be basically leading. This is your IA. This is your VT, this is your IA, and this is your theta. Okay. Now, your EA is equal to your VT plus IA times JXS. This is, this is the relationship. So, IA this is a vector. I will move it to the tip here. And then I will have the perpendicular vector of that so this is your ia here so we'll have a perpendicular vector to it this is 90 degree and this vector is basically is equal to j x s i a and then we will have here your your ea now ea i know it it's given to us okay as equal to uh, 480 volt. VT is unknown to me. This is known, G, uh, XS times IA is known, known to me. Now, how to find this VT from the graph? So what we do basically, we extend this, this, and this is 90 degree, okay? And then we'll have this line perpendicular as well here. So I want to find this angle. What is this angle? Now, if you look to the big triangle and this small triangle, they are similar. Why? Because this is uh, 90, this is 90. This is a shared angle between the two triangles. So this angle has to be equal to theta. So there are two angles are already equal. So the third angle has to be equal. So knowing this, then I can find this segment. This segment is basically equal to X S I A sine theta. Okay, and this segment, this one here, is X S I A cosine theta. And then we'll apply the Pythagorean theorem. This is a right triangle. Okay. This one, this triangle is a right triangle. So you can say here, E A square is equal to V T, which is the whole voltage minus this, minus X S I A sine theta. This is square plus X S I A cosine theta square. Now, what do I know? I know EA, I know XS, I know IA, I know theta. So I know everything. I can find my VT. So this is uh, 480 square equal to VT minus XS is 0.95 times IA, IA is 55, but this is the line current. The phase current will be will be times 55 over root three. Why? Because this is a delta connection. Times sine of 36.9, and all of this is a square. So this is basically this length. This is this length plus 
0.95 times 55 over root 3 times cosine theta, which is basically the power factor, which is 0 0.8. 0 0.8, and this is a square. Okay, so now we will have 230,400 equal to VT minus 18.1, which is the multiplication of all of this, square plus this square 582. From this, you will take this to the other side. So your VT minus 18.1 is equal to the square root of 230,400 minus 582, and this is equal uh, to 479.4. So your VT will equal to 497.5, and of course the angle is zero. This is your, your VT. Okay, now you, because the power factor was leading, you notice that the terminal voltage is higher than the internal generated voltage. When you have a lagging power factor, as we will see in this part, it is the opposite. So now let's go to part number three. In part three, you need to find the voltage regulation when it is operating at full load at 0.8 power factor, same power factor, but this is lagging not leading okay so first let's define the vo voltage regulation voltage regulation is equal to v no load minus v full load divided by v full load of course times 100 to find it as a percentage now this is my my model that i am using this is your ea this is jxs and this is your vt now when we calculate the voltage regulation we are interested to find the voltage regulation at the terminals okay now when i equal to zero the v terminal v terminal at no load is equal to ea which is equal to 480 volt now i need to find the vt similar to what we have done here the only difference now we will have a lagging power factor and when we have a lagging power factor the graph will be different so here this is the graph this is your vt now your ia here was leading now the ia is will be lagging so this is your ia and this is your theta we move ia here and then we go 90 degree with it and this is your j x s i a the same kvl that your ea equal to vt plus j x s i a so this vector plus this vector you will get your your ea and EA is given to us is 480 volt. Now I need to find VT. Again, we'll do that in using graph. So again, I will do this and I will move this. This is 90. So this triangle, this one, we use different colors so that you can clearly uh, trace this one. So let me use this color. So this triangle, This triangle are basically similar to each other. Why? Because this angle is equal to this angle. This is 90, this is 90. So this angle has to be theta. Okay, so this is very, very important to understand how to deal with that now. So it means that if this is uh, theta, so basically this will be x is i a cosine theta and this will be x is i a sine theta again applying the Pythagorean theorem so you will go for external triangle so you will have here 
E A square is equal to V T plus X S I A sine theta, which is the whole thing, all of this. It's V T plus this. All square plus X S I A cosine theta all square. So if you look to this equation and this equation, they are exactly the same. The only difference here is minus and here is plus. Everything else is exactly the same. So we will have here the 230,400 equal to VT plus the 18.1 all square plus plus the, the 582 and from this your vt will equal to the square root of 2000 so 30400 minus 582 minus the 18.1 and this will give me a voltage equal to 461.3 volt this is what i mentioned that the uh, the voltage when we have the terminal voltage when we have a lagging power factor is less than the internal generated voltage now from this your voltage regulation equal to 480 minus 461.3 divided by 461.3 times 100 and this will give me 4.05 percent this is your voltage regulation then in part four find the efficiency okay now the efficiency is your p out over pn your p out is equal to root three v terminal i line cosine theta and we want to find this at point eight power factor lagging so root 3 times the voltage the terminal voltage which is basically we found it as 461.3 it's the same condition 0.8 lagging 0.8 lagging so this is equal to now if you change the power factor then you have to do the calculations again and again so this is becomes equal to 461.3 times 55 times 0.8 and this will give me 35.16 kilowatt this is your p out your pn equal to p out plus summation of all losses that we have so it is 35.16 plus the 1.5 plus the 1.25 now there is no winding loss because ra has been ignored so this will give me 37.9 kilowatt from this, my efficiency is equal to the 35.16 divided by 37.9 times 100 to have it in percentage, and this will give me 92.8%. The last thing, what is the input torque that must be applied? Now, we have to apply an input torque. So your PN, the electrical power N is equal to the torque input times omega so this is electrical and this is the mechanical power so the electrical and the mechanical at any part they are equal to each other at the output at the converted power at the bn they are matching to each other so bn is equal to torque times omega we have everything so your 10 torque the input torque equal to pn which is we already found it which is 37.9 times 10 to power 3 divided by omega which is 2 pi over 60 times the rbm that so this is 2 pi over 60 to convert the rbm to omega radian per second and you do that this is equal to 301.6 newton newton meter so this is a typical uh, synchronous uh, generator question from the beo exam